Thanks for coming all this way. What brings us all together, and that's that we're all about creating change in many different ways in many different places. We're agents of change, and that's what the book was all about that started all of this. It was really, and Michael will say this so much better than me, but my interpretation is about why we need to change and how we can do that in a way that people will actually accept change and move with it and enjoy it. Um, it's what my career has been about too. I've spent 25 years in different organizations, the UN, World Bank, the UK government, CJR, trying to create change, trying to widen the frame from narrow interpretations of objectives to broader sets of objectives, which often involves, is, involves internalizing all these trade-off discussions you need to have and really difficult institutional change. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to, to today. The, the agenda, to me, it seems to be all about innovation and change and how we make that shift to circularity, which is a change from what we are now as a society. It's happening at a time when it feels like change is just accelerating around us. I don't know if that's just a personal perception. I don't know how you measure that. It just feels like things are exponentially increasing in terms of the geopolitical changes, technological changes, the, the, the speed of planetary change, the, the way economies are shifting and, and, and changing. And so. It's, in some ways, it's changes too fast, but it's also not fast enough. And anyone that's managed institutional changes, I think you're all doing in your different ways, knows that the pace at which we're changing to, in a sense, tackle, to be able to offset, to change, to, to, to adjust to the planetary emergency that we're facing, is just not fast enough. It's fast, but it's not fast enough. And we know how difficult it is to manage that change. So I hope we can learn from each other today about what's the art of change. And that's what the book was about, but we've got many people doing that in real life here. And it's what the Cradle to Cradle certification program is actually all about. It's, and, and this was the, the revelation to me once I, I joined, the, the, took on this role, is the certification is sort of the, the tip of the iceberg. It's just the cherry on the cake. It's an incentive to say, we've done this. And a third, credible third party has verified that this is real these claims we're making. But beneath all that, there's this incredible amount of organizational change that is really difficult. It's not easy. It's not like people desperately want to change in most, in most cases. So what we do is we, we try and turn, and we've succeeded in, in creating in, in this amazing concept in helping that become a practical reality in defining a pathway with different stages of change and taking what could be quite a sort of elusive concept of circularity and making it something very real and measurable and definable. And that's, what, that's a credit to the book and the team that then, then did that. And I've just heard some wonderful stories in my first, well, it's only three and a half months in the role. One company, for example, and this is a direct quote, it said, you know, being part of the certification program, or adopting that, has completely influenced our business beyond recognition. The impact on the supply chain and the whole business has, has been wonderful. So there's this so-called optimization process that happens as people go through and prepare for the certification that is really, it's really an organizational change program that is defined around making a product so much better in so many different ways. There's a whole bunch of opportunities facing us right now as a program. As the planetary emergency gathers pace, which it just is, the pressure to take action grows. And we're part of that, right? And that pressure is coming from consumers, from electorates, from governments, we're seeing some incredible evolution of, of regulations, especially in Europe. We're feeling it from shareholders, I'm sure you're feeling it from shareholders, and of course companies and, and inspired leadership of companies. And what this program is, often, is doing is often taking companies that are at that inflection point from somewhat doing less bad to proactively doing good and helping them move up different, different levels of ambition there. There's a rapidly growing interest in circularity in, in all markets, and that's matched by the, the program being the only multi-attribute standard, the scale that, that includes circularity in a, in a very defined and distinct way. The consumer awareness over health and toxicity is growing in, in part thanks to the, um, the greater communications enabled by, by, by digital communication. And, and the rigor of our standard is, is just quite exceptional in that space, so that's also driving demand. Another thing that's driving demand is the remaining consumer trust in certification and the desire 
for that trust to be underpinned by regulatory standards such as the Green Claims Directive that actually looks at those, those, those certifications and makes sure that they're, they're very real. So we're seeing the Green Claims Directive in Europe could be an absolute game changer for us and, and that, that's super important to our future. So the potential is there to operate on a much greater scale. We have 500 plus companies, some really big names in that list, but we need 10 times that to start making the kind of impact and doing the kind of good we would like to do. So that's, a, that, that's the question for us, is how do we scale this amazing thing at a, at a very different level, all with the objective of doing the maximum good in the shortest period of time? And there's many ways we're, we're, we're trying to address that, that challenge. What we're finding is that to be leader of any organization right now, you need to be changing at least the speed of the context in which you're operating. And that's what we're trying to do. Very quickly on taking this role, I found that there was a number of discussions with companies about this is great, this, this new standard you've got, version 4. It's like a step change in ambition, even from the ambitious, what we call version 3 before. But it's been on the market two years and there's some, some wrinkles we need to iron out very quickly to make that adoptable by modern complex businesses with incredibly complex supply chains. So I set up, um, we set up with the, the, the strong support of the board, a task force to resolve that. And we've done that in three months. We haven't completed that job, but we've gone through a very elaborate process with our, what we call assessors. Those are the companies that work with us, with, with companies to, to go through this change process to identify a whole bunch of things that we need to update in our standard. So we're very likely to do what's called the version 4.1. And that's great. The next thing we need to do is update the guidance. It's a thing that, that, that's quite a complex set of uh, guidance about how this is operated. Then we need to look at how we can make the certification process more, more efficient, automate some of it in terms of making the digital communications between, for example, the assessors and ourselves, making that a reality. But beyond that, we need a much bigger advocacy campaign a much more significant communication campaign around this. And we really need help in that. We're a very small institute. We shouldn't do that alone. So that needs to be an effort with our assessor organizations, this board we've got, which is so high level. And we need champions out there. The other thing we're doing is scaling up the capacity of the institute itself and working out with our assessors to do the same. And also working much more with other labels, with, with other certifications and regulations. Because what we're finding sometimes is that we're asking companies to do things twice in this broad movement of certification and government regulations. And that doesn't make sense. We should make it much easier for interoperability in the sense that if, if some work is done on one space, an EPA, for example, we fully recognize that and then build up there. Because often we are more ambitious than other often sector-specific regulations. But if we recognize that, we can have a head start to move forward and move beyond that. So there's, there's loads we can be doing. That's the point. There's a lot of opportunity right now as things are shifting around us. So it's really a moment of opportunity. It's a moment of opportunity and change. We have an incredible team and really look forward to discussing today and sharing very openly and honestly, what's it like to manage change? How can this program be an inspiration for change? What's the role of certification in this change story? And how do we scale that up at the kind of ambition we've got? It's an amazing concept created 20, 20 years ago that, that's, a, that's actually even more relevant. It's just as relevant today as it was then. It's really stood the, the test of time. So that's what we want to do today. We also want to get to know each other, create this community. We're actually part of a broader movement here. There's, there's a number of organizations around the world trying to spread this message around, around cradle to cradle.